always got to keep pressure on this line at all times. That way you're going to get tight loops as you go around here. No sharp edges on any of those where it's broke off. That way nothing can catch themselves on it or scratch it. Nice tight bead. And the little top one there is where the ripple key goes into to unlock it. If you ever want to undo it. Sand. I've just You're created a right? loop on this high tensile wire. That way I'm getting good contact with this earth. I haven't just got one more. Point five, seven point six, seven point eight. All depends. G'day folks, Jason from the Outer Farm here. I'm actually on the trial property, but we're gonna be heading out to the Outer Farm. We've got loads of work to do over the next couple of days. We're finally gonna energize our timeless fence system. Obviously, I've got my solar charger here. We've gotta clear the vegetation off the fence line because it's about three foot high. It's like 14 months ago since we've done sections of this timeless fence over the Outer Farm. So we've gotta clear that. I've got some knot tying to do. There's sections of fence which I'm gonna temporary block off. So I can graze the animals. So I'm going to run through a few knots. We're using portion and ceramic insulators. So I'll run through some basic knots. I've got some earth stakes, which I'm going to run through and put earth stakes in. And we're finally going to put the energizer on and charge her up. Now that we've moved all the grass from under the fence line, before we can go ahead and put in our energizer and spring gates, we've got an area behind us which we've got to put a temporary fence in. My existing timeless fence with those two A-frame braces there is running straight down this way. But the interim, I need to put as a post on that side, a strainer post. I'm going to temporary wire across there so I can graze this in the winter graze or coming up the spring. What I'm going to use is a gripple. The reason I like gripples is because it's only a temporary fence, the tails on those plain wire there, with the gripple tool, which comes with the gripple pack, you just push it in and you can unlock it and slide the wires off. If you've got a permanent, permanent source or permanent joiner that, that uses a clamping mechanism to join, you need to then cut that wire. But with the simple gripple tool, straight in, with the tool, push it in till it clicks and then just pull the two wires out and you can reuse that gripple and also reuse the wire. I know I'm going to be tying off on this strainer post. So what I want to do is make up my wires for the insulators to go on to here. That way they're not going directly around and earthing out on this post. So just a simple termination knot. Allow yourself, you just go always cross over the top of the wire. So keep tension on this wire go over the top keep tension pulling it down and pull it straight back come up and that keeps this area tight so what you need to do now is slacken that wire off and feed the tail back inside against the post and pull it back on so now with that wire inside the loop against the post keeping the tension on it, pull it round 180 degrees and then back straight up 90. And from there what you're going to do is make yourself a tail. At this point you should have about a foot, foot and a half of wire left over to make your tail with. You make this handle right here. You use that to crank to make your loops. You always got to keep pressure on this line at all times. That way you're gonna get tight loops 
as you go around here. So now you're going down 180 degrees, right to the bottom of the post. And this is where you use your crank handle. Keep that pressure on. Don't worry about making, don't worry about the, how tight the loops are. If you keep the pressure on this handle at all times, the loops, are, your loops are gonna get tight. So crank it around, keep the pressure on, keep going. I like to do mine, six tight loops. And if you run out of line, you can always extend that, bend that crank handle and go again. It's one, that's, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And to break that knot off now, you just go in the opposite direction with your crank handle. Just go this side, it's going to be easier. And then turn, go in the opposite direction. As you'll see, that snap straight off. I'll bring you in for a closer look on what we've got. So there we have it there. Nice, neat knot. Nice little D. One, two, three, four, five, six. I went seven loops there. And if you have a look down underneath, where that has snapped off, right there, there's no sharp edges. Clean snap. Nothing can scratch themselves on it. I'll go do, got three more of them to do, and then we'll put the insulators on. I'm just gonna use these ceramic insulators I had in the shed. They've got an aluminium housing around the outside with a carbon steel bolt. A couple of them are cracked on the edges, the, the insulation's broken off, the porcelain, but that porcelain or ceramic section through the center is not broken. So as long as that's not broken in that ceramic, it's not gonna short out in the bolt. A few chips on the edges isn't gonna hurt. Nothing grand about this knot. I'm just gonna go straight round, straight down the bottom. Make your crank handle, 90 degrees. Keep it tight all the way around, that's a secret to getting tight loops. Pressure, pressure on the crank handle at all times. Around that three, four, five, one more, six. Now to break it off, that crank handle, you just turn the opposite direction and then just go in the opposite direction to what you're just cranking. So just turn him around and choose you to snap off. This one's gonna make a lot out of it. There it goes. Snaps off. Bring you guys in and have a closer look. Have a look how neat and tidy that is. No sharp edges on any of those where it's broke off. That way nothing can catch themselves on it or scratch it. Nice tight D. Perfect for a temporary fence. I don't want to bore you guys with tune me not, so we won't go over it again, but just when you're tying off insulators, like their ceramic ones. A good piece of advice is this one here, for example, I've done it to show you guys what can happen. If you go around once around the insulator, it's very hard to get that tight loop. And also it's very hard then to tie your circles at the end, tight circles. This is one to wobble everywhere like that. But not only that, because this loop isn't tight, if livestock were to bump that, which highly unlikely they would because it's electrified once or twice and they wouldn't touch it again, but if that was to jump out and go down the slider side of that ceramic insulator like it is now, it would short out against that aluminium, sorry, that carbon steel bolt right back through the post and be grounded. So you don't want that happening. You can see how loose that is. I can just move that from side to side. Compared to, you see here, I've gone around twice. I went round with my high tensile wire, I left myself probably two foot to play with because I need a good crank handle. Feed it back through again, go down, and go through twice. So if you look underneath, that's giving me these two rings on this insulator. And have a look how tight that is. I can't even get my finger through there. But not only that, when you start cranking now to put these tight turns on, those two loops give you a bit of stability. And it's not wobbling here like this single one was around. You find that so much easier to tie and it definitely cannot come off that insulator and it's a lot tighter. There's no way that's gonna short out and jump off the edge with two circles in there like that. Well, I'm gonna tie the rest of these five off now and we'll get on with it. So I've tied off all those porcelain insulators there now, all five of them. Been tied up there with the five wires hanging off the end. I don't generally like to do that, let high tensile wires spill like that, not easily. But so I could show yeah, how these gripples work i'll bring you down this in and i'll hook up those last three as you can see i've already got two 
joined in there. So these are a medium sized gripple. It's got the name gripple on it. You find there's two holes at each end. This will only go through one of those holes. If you try and put it through the other one, I'll just show you. This is the tool that unlocks them. Might as well give the demo now. So you push it, there's another little hole in the top here. Let's push that in. There it clicks and it comes out. That was very smart, Martin. I've got to get that from down there now. That'll be take two. Bloopers. So this is a gripple. It's got the name on the front. There's four holes. There's two at each end. Well, actually, it should say three holes. There's the two the wires go through. And that little top one there is where the gripple key goes into to unlock it, if you ever want to undo it. You'll notice it won't go through that blue hole. It will only go through the top one. So you can't get it wrong. It'll only go through one of the holes. So obviously it's not one, it's the other. Just put it through with the other one. Obviously, it's the opposite hole. It won't go through the same hole. And that goes without saying. And that's it. There is a gripple tensioner you can get. I've got one at home. You put it on the gripple and it holds the wire and holds the gripple and you crank it and it's got a torque setting on it. You probably, you don't need to do that with when you're doing the time fencing. They say you only need to take the sag out and I found with a pair of fencing wires, fencing pliers, not wires, fencing pliers on the ends, I can easily get the, the torque or the tension I need. Pan tight, sag taken out of it. So that's it, and to undo that now, like I said, there's three holes. Two the wire goes through, and one with the key. You merely push the key all the way in, hold this wire, and the wire comes out. If the wire doesn't come out, remember I haven't strained this yet to the tension I require it. If the wire doesn't come out, what they say is to take the pressure off the wire. So you pull this wire out, holding the gripple, holding your key tool, like so. You pull this wire out with the with this set of fencing pliers to take the tension off it, and then you push the gripple key in, and then it'll easily, looks like I've got to show you now. I haven't got the pliers on me. So with the tension taken, on this wire now, you just put the gripple tool in there, push that in, and off comes your wire. That's it. I'm going to go ahead now and tension all these five wires. You may be thinking, what on earth is he doing? As we know, it's illegal to electrify a barbed wire fence. Because I've got this high tensile fence I just put through, which is going to be electrified, I need to have some insulators between where it goes over the top of the barbed wire in case the cat will knock it. So I had a bit of inch rule PVC or poly pipe. I just ripped it down the middle. I'll open it up and that's going to be a sock over the barbed wire. Not too worried about this bottom one because it can't actually touch anything. It can't go down and touch anything. It really can't go up. It's fair movement. But there is that poly braid there anyway if it does go up. But this one and this one and the top one I'll have to do. So I've got one on. All I do is rip that open. Put your fingers in there. Open that sleeve up and go along. And get that barbed wire in. All the way along. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Now, now I've got the camera rolling. It's taking me twice as long for this one. Now it's inside. That'll slide along there nicely. Same with this one. The reason why I put them on the barbed wire, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Put on this plain wire, it's just going to slide down. Because you've got barbs every hundred mil in here, if the cows were to bump it, it's going to knock off 
on one of those barbs. No matter which I push it, it's going to lock off on a barb. So it's highly unlikely that a cow is going to bump it and it's not going to get caught on one of these barbs. So there's less chance for it to move across the barbed wire than it is it just slides straight down that plane wire. That hole's been filled in now. You might notice I put a time dropper in there or a spreader bar. I'll put that in there so the livestock can identify that wire because it is a long span. I think that's going to be close to six meters there. My normal posts are five meters apart. That six is about 18 foot, 19 foot. So there is a bit of distance there and they mightn't see the wire. So that white dropper or spreader bar there, they can see that if they're walking towards it. Now that that's done, we'll go put in some earth stakes. That way we can get our energizer up and running. And when it comes to your rods or your earth stakes, I've heard multiple stories on distances apart. Three is a common number, so I'm using three here, but I've heard anywhere between, or read, between four foot to 10 foot apart. The majority say 10 foot apart, which is three meters. The next thing I've got to do is run, join these three earth stakes or rods together with wire. I'm just using high tensile wire for mine. The same wire I used on my electric fence. I'm going to keep mine high up as I can. That way, when the grass growth comes through, I can whip a snip underneath without getting entangled with the whippersnipper. And then from the last rod, I'm going from there down and joining onto this bottom earth wire at the bottom. When I put the insulator, oh sorry, when I put the energizer on, I'm going to use the earth insulated cable provided straight onto the earth wire, the earth stake. What I've done here to start this end, I've just created a loop on this high tensile wire. That way I'm getting good contact with this earth. I haven't just got one wire going through it. I've got two points of contact along there. The more contact you've got, the better the earth you're gonna get. So it's just a matter of feeding it in, getting it lined up, putting it over top of the post, tighten him up. Then just bend him over that 90 degrees. We'll head down and do the middle one. Now it's just a simple case of bending that down and running it there down to that last stake. There we have it, all three earth stakes wired up ready for use in the road. I'll take and you down now. the bottom here, all I use is just a split bolt to join my earth wire along to this ground wire or earth wire. The only thing left to do is throw on the energizer. I'm going to let this sit probably half a day. It's got a fair bit of charge in it now. Well, the looks of that, we're I'm pretty well right to up. go. 313.5 volts, and the symbol, the battery symbol, is full. This is the most furthest point, or the termination, of that fence line currently in play. Once I get the row done, this will be extended down with a single hot wire to match up to the other end we're just at. So the cattle will be going in the paddock behind me in that three days time. We'll just find out what we are here with kilovolts, the most furthest point away from that energizer on the other end of the paddock. We're sitting at 7.5 kilovolts. Put my fault finder on and give you guys a look. As you can see, 7.5, 7.6, 7.8.2. At the moment, we're sitting at fluctuating between 7.6, 7.8 kilovolts. On that note, I'd better head off and do a bit more work. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening guys, wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.